Okay, welcome everybody. Division 2 action now uh, between Ivan Alfonso at the top of the screen and Matt Powell at the bottom. This is week 2. Uh, so Matt Powell had a good start in week 1, picked up 9 points. Uh, Ivan will want to see a vastly improved effort this week. Uh, he only picked up the solitary points, so he's, he's looking for a solid start. Both these players uh, came through our new players division from last season, season 6. Both very, very good quality, reliable players. Uh, looks like Mono Green on one side here. Uh, key to the City, you don't see that one around too often. <coughs> key to the City is discard a card and target creature is unblocked for this turn. Uh, it's a bit of an unusual one to play main board. A Druid of the Cow, so uh, Matt's just ramping at this stage. Looks like straight up blue white control on the other. I don't know why he hasn't run out the Steel Leaf Champion here. I think when you're a mono green against a a control deck, you just have to Okay, he's got some shenanigans going in. There's no reason to discard a card there to make that unblockable, so I'm guessing there's a reason he wants cards in his graveyard. Uh, Steel Leaf Champion I would have been going for on as fast as possible. Go to Ruin, it looks like it's going to do absolutely nothing in this match on Ivan's side. Uh, what, what, one thing that, that Matt will be looking at here is there's no second white sword, so he doesn't have to worry about settle the wreckage. So here's a test for the first counter spell, and there is one, it's a disallow. But the little the little one one getting in is not going to get the job done here but for Matt. There's a second white sword, so he is gonna pay two and draw a card. It's, he's got so suddenly just like that, he's got two ten tens. If this resolves, he's going to be able to play the Gigantosaurus, which I believe is con is it what Convoke or is that too early? Uh, that resolved that tells me there's either no counter spells because you'd certainly counter that. Okay, he's going to block it instead to get the card draw. Yeah, otherwise, he's got Fumigate. But he's he's slowly, slowly built up now, he's up to six lands and still got 17 life. Okay, so I'm guessing the key to the city here is in the deck to combo with Gigantosaur because Gigantosaur doesn't have trample, so it's just to push through that extra damage and make it a two turn clock. And okay, now we know what he's up against is a straight up blue white approach. And at 22 life, yeah, you've got to run out all your threats and just hope to get him. Four, seven turns. He plays a search for a scanter, so it's more like get him before two or three turns now. I'm just trying to, I'm, I've been down with a sore back, so I'm trying to find a comfortable position lying on the floor to record this. Now, he's playing around, there's a seal away. I was going to say, he's playing around, um, What's that card? I think he was playing, playing around Settle the Wreckage, but I, I, I don't believe he's got time to do that. I think he's just going to be straight up dead next turn. Because it's still it's a three turn clock here. The stunt is digging too deep every turn. It's not dead next turn. Another key to the city. That's the third one we've seen in this match. So I think those are going to come out pretty quick, smart here. Vine Bear is going to give him. Um, Vime is going to give him lethal next turn, otherwise it would have been a point short of lethal. Uh, Ivan's just thinking if he wants to let this resolve or not. 
he lets it resolve. So in come the knuckleheads, down to eight. I think he's run out of time here because a Skanda will discard. He draws, he'll have a second one. No, he doesn't. So he's, he's actually got lethal here if there's no... Oh, but floods of two forests. You've just got to swing and hope he doesn't have it. He does have it, so I, I don't think... Daddy? I don't think Matt Bell can recover from that. Okay, very good. I don't have it. No, you did it. Oh, wait, I'm recording after I finish this. Flips. So, and here's a second approach. So, that's a concession. We're going to go to game two. I think, um... I think that mono green is really poorly equipped to deal with an approach deck. I can't even think what he could possibly bring in from the sideboard that would even help in this match. I would have taken those key to the cities out. Uh, the only card that possibly, even if it exists in the sideboard, I don't know if it does, is um, Heroic Intervention. I don't know if he plays that or not. It might be worthwhile if there's a Fumigate, but it's a really, really difficult matchup, I think. You can see Ivan's got the counter spells here. Now, if he doesn't draw a land here, he, can, he does, so it's perfect. He's going to get the Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant, though, you can see there, there are the two white sources on the other side. So if he doesn't find a settled wreckage, it's a three pound clock. He digs with the cast out trying to find it. Draw to the cow is a really poor draw here. I think he can he can discard that two key if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. I think I would have played the land instead just to uh, play around something like a fumigate. Because if he fumigates, he's down to four lands. The only way to beat this card is, yeah, with set of the wreckage, and that's what he's got. So he, he managed to find it somewhere. But he misses a land drop, so that gives hope. The only problem for that, about that key to the city, look, I think it just looks really bad. It is enabling him to draw on the next turn. But you can see here, all his big threats are gone. As Ivan starts digging now. And here's a Lyra Dawnbringer, so how's he going to beat that? Uh, that's going to be very tough now. Well, Lifecraft is best here, he's a nice one. Now, Bristling Hydra, I don't think is as very good in this deck because he doesn't have access to energy. I, I can't see how he's going to get energy. They're just saying in chat that um, key to the city is gives them more gas for the deck. I, I, I tend to, I don't really like it to that extent because you have to spend the mana on your next turn and your upkeep. So it's, it's in a way, it's, it's card advantage, but it's mana disadvantage. Yeah, 
now he's in this interesting position where does he want to commit everything to the board? Oh, he does. So he just answered that question. So, he, uh, a fumigate here would just be an absolute disaster. On the other side, Ivan's at 6, so he, he can approach next turn, which would put him to 20, 29, so very high. And there's no viable attacks for that. He, he can't swing in once Lyra Dornbringer uh, switches to defense. I think he's trying to activate the Scar uh, Archer Varaska, but he doesn't have the City's Blessing yet. Is that the magic number now? Seven. Because the other issue here is something like a settled wreckage would could blow him right out of the water as well. Prowling Serpipid would have been excellent in his opening hand. I think if he's talking about card advantage, I would play the Lifecraft as best series over the key to the city in my opening deck. Okay, see what he swings here. He's got 19 damage. It's not lethal, so he's going to have a Gear Hulk. What's he got in the. I don't think he's got a settled wreckage in the. Oh, he, do, he does, because he took down the Carnage Tyrant. Oh, this is going to be a wipeout. And for some reason, Matt just going to spend all his energy on that. On that Hydra, he's seen enough, that's going to get the match done. So we go to modern now where Matt's playing Bunt Spirits. We'll see what Ivan is on. Mutavolt, okay, Spreading Seas. Mutavolt, Spreading Seas, it looks like it's uh, Merfolk. Yeah, I, I like the spell caller here. He's going to be able to start putting pressure on the caller next turn and stop the ether wire. One, two, three. He, he can wait a turn to play the dog skull, the red pains, and the dog skull captain. So I, I think he just plays attacks and passes here. Murphite can be very explosive though. But the thing going for him is that they don't really have removal spells in, in the Merfolk deck. So he's going to be able to flash in the red or, first red or chains here, and then he can play the Dark Skull Captain oh, with the second red or chains as his protection. So he can actually bounce spell color. No, 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 he's done it wrong here. Okay, so what he's done, he's going to target spell color. If you want to bounce something, which he doesn't, it would have been a red or change, which you could have just played straight back. This is a super aggressive line he's taken here. I would have at least played, I would have at least played one. He, he could have actually played the Supreme Phantom there and got an extra three points of damage in. And he could have held up the Drug Skull Captain as a kind of a counter spell. Phantasmal image, what's it going to copy? Now this is going to be nice, so he's going to catch him out here. Oh, he's gone after the spell coil, interesting. Uh, 
And I think Ivan is just dead next turn because he can activate the Devonly Township. So that's 5, 9, 13, 17 damage coming through. That's lethal. So game one goes to Matt. Uh, so Matt, after he's soundly beaten two games to zero in standard, has taken the first game of modern. Now, the, the interesting thing here in this kind of this tribal kind of matchup, it's the same when you face humans. You, you don't have a lot of removal spells, so it's you're kind of playing off the top of your deck, hoping for something. And there's a stony silence. It's a pretty good one to bring in. Well, stony silence, this has a lot of debate about whether you bring in stony silence against merfolk uh, and even humans, because it's kind of like it's one card for one threat. Uh, and it's super risky. So if, if the opponent, say, if you draw Stony Silence late in the game, it's terrible because uh, Ether Vial has done its thing. Or if the opponent uh, doesn't even draw Ether Vial, then it's also really bad. It doesn't do anything either. But here, the, the two uh, Merfolk Tricksters from uh, Ivan, and it's, it's, a, it's a mirror of the first game where all the pressure is coming on from the Merfolk side. He's going to get hit here though. Spell killer will be able to kill one of the. I, what did I miss there? He chose not to flash the spell killer to kill one of the tricksters. That would have been a free kill because he couldn't eat the vial when he came in. He's at 10, so if. If Ivan has a lord, then there's big trouble for. on the other side. Particularly the one that gives Island Hawk. Uh, and just as I say it, there he is, Lord of Atlantis. So six. There's Lethal on board next turn, and uh, Matt doesn't have 16 power to push through. He can path that Lord, but if there's a second Lord, forget about it. I'm surprised he did that there. He could have done it in the upkeep so that Atlantis tapped. Okay, so now there's 8 damage coming through. Oh, he's going yeah, to send 8. He could have sent 11. So it's lethal on board next turn. He is down to 4. He's dead if he can find another... Whatever he's called of the tides. What do you copy in here? So he's going to put him to two. Uh, oh, okay. And he, he's got a gut shot. I didn't see that one coming. He gut shots him for the win. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know that they played that. So we're going to game three. And Matt here has kept a super risky one-hander. This is not as risky as it would be against other decks because he's relying on the two noble Hyrax to get the work done. The Hyrax... Um, The Hyrax um, would die to Bolt otherwise, but here there's no real danger for them. Doesn't muck around, gets that Lord of Atlantis off the battlefield. And Worship. I don't know if... Uh, Merfolk will play Echoing Truth. I don't know if they... Um, if Ivan would have bought that in. So let's see what he says in the chat, because he's just straight up dead to worship. This is a risky attack because if he can violate the Lord here, that which is looks like he's going to do, Hyrax just dead. Yeah, so he, now he doesn't have the mana for Collective Company. 
I didn't like that line at all. I think instead of playing the Mausoleum Wanderer, you should have just held up Cluck and Company for the next turn. But the thing here with the worship, he doesn't even have to do anything. It doesn't matter if the other, if your opponent's attacking and doing damage. You, you're not interested in blocking. Now I think you pass a turn. Yeah, I mean obviously attacking him pass a turn. And Coco. Three cards in hand. I've been spying on, so he clearly has an answer to this. Set of the wreckage is going to wipe his board. The, the, the danger here. See, I was, okay, so he had Venza. So if there was no set of the record on that on that side, uh, he would have just been dead this turn to worship, uh, being bounced by Vensa. Unfortunately, what's going to happen is he's going to have to use Vensa to bounce the set of the record, rather than bouncing the worship. So Matt drops to one. The only other card that he that can get around worship in this situation, I. I can think of that he may have is Vapor Snag. If he Vapor Snags one of Matt's creatures, then he can also win like that. Three turn clock now. So he needs to find something to beat worship. There's no point in attacking at this stage. I, I would be amazed if he had more than one Vencer in his deck. No concessions yet, so he's obviously, he's obviously exploring his options to see what he can do. He's still going to swing in, I don't see the point, but... Now, if this is something that can bounce worship, then... It is, so that's lethal right there. No blocks, and he's got to fire off that set of the wreckage. Incredibly unlucky for Ivan. I like the way he's played this. Uh, you can't you have to imagine that there's not, not more than two settles in Matt Powell's sideboard. He found them both in succession. And now a second worship. So it would surely be only be echoing truth that could save him here. Or Vapor Snag. He found that the second oh sorry that there wasn't a second worship, it was the one that bounced by, by Vincer. Lethal next turn, they need something right now. He doesn't get it, so we're going to Legacy, and Matt Powell strikes back to take Modern. In a, quite a highly entertaining match, so this looks like he's on this mono-red prism sort of deck. It's very popular in the league at the moment. Uh, 
Eldrazi Temple. Well, turn two Blood Moon will take care of that, and now it's going to be very tough for the for the Eldrazi player. What do you play Chalice for? I, Perhaps I would run this chalice out for zero just to take down the endless one. Otherwise, the next target to two mana, which means you could tap four, which is probably too late. So he's going to go for it now. What's he going to tell us for? No, he's not. He's just going to pass the pen. So he must be setting up tell us for two here. Okay, so this is Cloud Post or Gazi. You can see the chalice on the other side for zero. So he doesn't even need to play out his chalice. The chalice on the other side is doing the work for him. Plays it out for two. So th th here it's, um, here's the endless one. Oh, okay, so I, I read that wrong. He is missing land drops though. Uh, Ivan's missed two in a row now, so he, he really needs to start hitting something. He's got six in hand, six cards in hand. And with an active Chandra on the other side, you, you'd imagine this is. It's going to be very difficult. I think he's got this turn and the next, and that's it to hit the land. So he finds an Eldrazi Mimic, which is countered by Chalice of the Void. He, he could play out this, this Mages of the Moon he's going to, so it's, it's going to give him a threat. Reveals another Chandra. I don't think there's anything in the Eldrazi deck for three. But it is a two turn clock. Still cannot find that fourth land. He's got the full seven cards in hand as well. P and Kira Noir comes down. So this we're going to gain two in Legacy. After Matt was comprehensive Intensively swept by Ivan and Standard, he, he struck back in, um, struck back in Modern, and, and now he's going to strike back in Legacy as well to take the first game. Yeah, that, that's a concession. So, game two now, as we see Hazaret making an appearance in Legacy. I'm a bit surprised, to be honest, that Chalice of the Void stayed in here. Turn one, Blood Moon. Chalice for zero is going to shut off, shut off that Chrome Mox. So he's only got one land, but I think this could be going to a game three here. Chalice will counter that Chrome Mox. The little 1-1, one, one, going to get the work done, is it? And now a Ratchet Bomb. So Ratchet Bomb's going to take down all of his moon-like effects. Plenty of time to ratchet it up to three. Um, phone right now, but it's like I'm, I can't play this game, and I'm, I'm not watching YouTube. Alright then. You should be out by the couch. Okay. So he, he does have threats now. Um, and I, I think that Ratchet Bomb on three is going to be pretty a pretty good one as well.
He may, he may want to, no, I was going to say, he may want to use the Simeon Spirit Guide to just cast something here because he's taken four a turn now. Because even something like a Staring Bridge is not going to do anything for him under, under these conditions because he's still got a full grip. That was a nice play from Ivan, cracking the red chip bomb. He's going to find a smash away going to cut to go to game three, I'm pretty sure. It's not going to save him. He's still dead to reality smasher. So game three now. Hey, shh. Turn it off. Go out. Shut the door. Shut the door, please. So, but both these early matches... Oh, turn, turn zero, blood moon. Both these early matches are the outcome, were the outcome and legacy of four mana on one side. Okay, so he's got a ratchet bomb, so... He's a he's a goblin rebel master. So if he can ratchet to three, and if he can survive to get to three with the ratchet bomb, then he's going to be in a pretty good position. And Aldrazi mimic's a good one because it's going to hold off the rebel master from doing too much damage. So Ratchet Bomb goes to two. I think he, 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 he's got to back up Blood Moon here. I wonder if I even thought about uh, firing off the... Uh, sorry, uh, cracking the Ratchet Bomb before combat so that he didn't get an extra Goblin token. Because particularly if he can find another creature here, there's not really a huge incentive for him to get rid of that Blood Moon at the moment. Chalice for two, I don't think is a huge deal for the Eldrazi player. So he's got these goblins coming in, but if if there's something like a Thought Knots here, or oh, actually he can't even cast a Thought Knots here, sorry, because he doesn't have the colorless mana. So, that, so he's, he's cracked the Ratchet Bomb to take up. He needs a play here though. He's got plenty of mana, two, four, six, seven mana available for to cast Eldrazi's and, and four cards in hand. So he's got to do something right now because the Blood Moon's coming down again next turn. Plays a Glimmer Post and just passes with three cards in hand. I'd love to know what those three cards were because I think he's locked out now. I can't believe he's got so much mana, three three cards in hand and nothing to do. Okay, I think he's saying he had an all log. But unfortunately, it's a two-turn clock, and Matt is going to, after losing Sanders, is going to come back and take Modern and Legacy in Division 2 to climb right back up near the top of the ladder. Chandra just threw out salt into the wounds and actually make lethal this turn. <laughs> 